This lesson is going to be about energy changes and how you can actually calculate how much energy uh, is required to change the temperature of something, or if the temperature does change, how much energy was used based on how much of a substance you have. So as I had mentioned in class, um, the equation that we're working with is Q equals MC delta T. So let me define what each of these is. Q stands for heat transfer, and heat transfer can be in two types of units. It can be in calories, which is C-A-L, uh, or in joules, which is in J. And joules, I'll write down here, all right? And we'll calculate those slightly differently. Then next you have M, that stands for mass. C, sometimes also used as S, um, stands for, or C stands for specific heat. Each substance r behaves differently with a certain amount of energy put into it. And for example, water has a really high specific heat. That means it takes a lot of energy to heat it up or cool it down. Whereas something like a metal, you notice if you put metal onto a hot plate, it heats up really fast. It has a very low specific heat. And then the last component is delta T, and that is a change in temperature. And with this equation, we can more or less do any sort of calculation. So I'm going to go through three different examples of how we can use this equation to calculate uh, certain quantities that we want to figure out. So the first uh, example is you have, um, we want to know on how much energy is transferred to raise five grams of water from 25 degrees Celsius to 75 uh, degrees Celsius. So again, we're going to start with our uh, equation. So Q, remember, is transfer of energy. Then we have M, and I will use C and delta T. Okay, so that's our equation. And literally, we are just plugging in numbers. So we are looking for a heat transfer. That is our Q. That is our unknown. We'll put that as a question mark. M is mass of whatever substance we have, and it looks like I have a mass right here, so that's my M value. Next, I have the substance. So C is what, what material is it that I'm using, and I'm using water in this case, okay? So what I'm going to do is I will open up my book to page 297. And on page 297, I have a small box that tells us the specific heats of all of these things. I'll tell you right now that water has a C value of one calorie for each gram for Celsius, okay? So, and that calorie is CAL. So that's uh, what I'm going to have as my value, one being the answer, okay? So one... Uh, calorie per gram per uh, Celsius. And then next here I have 25 degrees to 75 degrees. So here I have a temperature. Remember this is a difference in temperature. So I need to have how much did the temperature change. So simply I plug in the numbers. My M value is 5 grams. All right. My C value, that will always be given. You will never have to, well, sometimes you'll calculate it, but it'll be an easy calculation, is uh, one calorie per grams per Celsius. And then lastly, remember, is my delta T, the difference in temperature. And so for that reason, I have 75 degrees minus 25 degrees, because it is a difference. And if I were to solve that, Further, I have five grams over one cal grams over C and 50 degrees Celsius, right? You notice that these cancel out these units. Here's a numerator, there's a denominator. That's the same for this here. And it works out that my answer is 250 calories is what it takes to increase the heat of five grams of water from 25 uh, degrees Celsius to 75. So this is my Q value, so Q equals this. So literally just plugging in the numbers. 
We can do this also using joules, okay? Now keep in mind, I mentioned it before, that one calorie equals 4.184 joules. And this is just another unit of measurement, just like Fahrenheit uh, measures temperature and Celsius does also. And often we work with joules in chemistry. So you can take these calories, I have 250 of them, and I need to get that into joules. So simply I know that one calorie, and I'm looking at from above, one calorie equals 4.184 joules. So it's a simple dimensional analysis to do the conversion. And if I do the conversion, uh, it works out to be that I have 146 joules of energy required. And that's it. Okay, so that's how you do that sort of question. So for the next question, we're going to now maybe not necessarily look for the Q value, but look for something else. And in this case, uh, again, I place my Q equals MC delta T equation on there. And in this case, I have a uh, 5.63 grams uh, sample of solid gold, and it's heated from 21 to 32 uh, degrees Celsius, how much energy is required. So this one actually looks like I am looking for the Q value. Same thing. In this case, I have here my mass. So that's my M value. In this case, this is my substance. I have gold. Okay, I go to page 297, and I notice that on page 297 that gold has a specific heat of, so my C value is 0 0.13 joules, so this one is in joules, for grams, for every gram Celsius, okay? So I know my specific heat now, specifically of gold, I'll just put gold there, and I also know that the temperature is changing from 21 to 32 degrees, okay, so I plug in my numbers again. My mass is 5.63 grams. My specific heat is 0 0.13 joules per grams C, uh, per Celsius. And in this case, my get difference is 20. I always make like it to have it be a positive number because it's just a difference that I'm looking at. All right. So if I were to rewrite that, 0.63 grams. 0.13 joules per gram per C works out to be, just to make sure, 11 degrees Celsius. And if I plug in those numbers, it works out to be that I have a total of 8.1 joules. Okay? So now it's asking me in this case to convert that into calories as well. So, same thing. Remember, my conversion rate is that I have for every one calorie, 4.184 joules. So in this case here, now I have joules. So I simply want to get rid of those joules. I do that by placing my joule value on the bottom. Keep that joules. And uh, my calories on top. One calorie is the conversion rate. And if I do my calculation, it works out to be 1.9 calories. So that is my Q value. So we more or less have the same setup. For the next example, we're going to do something slightly different. And this one here, I want to know what the metal is, OK? So I have a 2.8 uh, gram sample of pure metal. I don't know what it is, but I know that it requires 10.1 gram, uh, 10 joules of energy to change its temperature from 21 to 36. All right, so let's see what my values are and what I have. So again, I write down my equation. So obviously 2.8 grams is my mass, so I make that my M value. And this one here, remember where you have 10.1 joules, this is actually a Q value. So for the first time, we're seeing a Q value in the question. And I don't know what my C value, uh, value is because it's some pure metal. This is my unknown. So C is my unknown. And it looks like it changed its temperature from 21 to 36. This is my delta T value. Okay, so I plug it in. 
I have 10.1 joules of some substance and uh, required to heat my sample that was 2.18 grams. C is my unknown, so I leave it as C. And then I do a change in temperatures, 36 minus 21. Uh, and clearly you can do that in your head as well. So you can instantly pop in the number if you want to. So I'll rewrite it. And it looks like we have a 15 degrees difference in temperature. So if I do the actual calculation for this one here, it's going to require a little bit of um, algebra. It works out that I have uh, my 10.1 grams to be 15 times. Your digital code is well, Natalie Escobar. Please report to room 504 now. Thank you. Natalie Escobar is forever going to have to report. Okay, so that works out to be that I have um, 42 grams C uh, and with my value of C. And I divide that so that it's 10.01. I'm simply doing this algebra and keeping my units as best as I can. Um, and that is my C value. And if I do the actual calculations, it should be something like uh, 0 0.24 joules per grams per C. And I know the units might throw you off here a little bit, but just keep in mind um, what we did was we simply multiplied the 2.8 grams by the 15 Celsius to become two, 42 grams uh, per Celsius. Our C value is our unknown. We took that to, I, to get the C by itself. We divided it to have this. So now this is my C value right here. It's asking though what is the substance, okay? So we know the specific heat of something. As I was saying that um, each substance has, has its own specific heat. So I go to page 297 and I look at which of these substances actually has a specific heat of about 0.24. And when I see that, I see, oh, hey, that looks like it's silver. All right, so now I can identify that to be silver. And, um, and that's it.